Hello again, I'm Doug Smith, and this is the 4 December 2015 edition of Portsmouth This Week, the voice of Portsmouth Town Hall. Uh, our topic today is maintaining a safe learning environment in our schools. Uh, we know that academics and student performance is, is of great interest currently in Portsmouth. Uh, but we have four guests today to talk about another important topic is how our schools maintain a safe learning environment and provide social and emotional support to our students. Our guests today to discuss these topics are Tom Kenworthy, our Assistant uh, Superintendent of Schools, Colleen Larson, Assistant Principal at Portsmouth High School, Chad Smith, Assistant Principal at Portsmouth Middle School, and Nicole Pasco, Social Worker at our elementary schools. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll get started right away with, with the idea of bullying. Bullying is a it's something we all grew up with, and it just seems to have, with all the different media and things, it seems to have gotten much sort of harder to deal with. Um, and that's either in person, you know, somebody just bullying a, an, another kid, or via the internet and via social media. Uh, we've all experienced it, but it can have a significant impact on those who, the victims of bullying, the people who are being bullied. How, how do we deal with these issues in the school? Maybe I could start with you, Colleen. Sure. Um, so at the high school level, we try to be really proactive. So even through our health and PE classes, part of their daily grade teaches about acceptance and tolerance, um, identifying kids' strengths and weaknesses as they're in classes. And so we become more tolerant of each other with the idea that, you know, then we're, you know, we're more acceptable of, of all the different students. And so it's less likely, you know, if you start to know a person well, that you're going to then treat them badly. We do have incidents of it. And when we do, we take care of it and we work with the you know the students that's being the victim um, we provide support to that person and then we deal with the person that might be causing the problem you know and we like to try to take the time to educate as to why that's not okay to do so yeah. we, we we spend a lot of time to be proactive about it though to kind of prevent it and create a positive atmosphere okay so th there's no anti-bullying program per se it's just built into the to your curriculum, basically. It, it's built in, and you know, throughout the year, through health classes, there's always projects, there's topics through social studies, you know, there's there's times where it's be made more prevalent or it's talked about, you know, but it's um, it's built into our day-to-day -day what we do. Yeah. Chad, let's go to the middle school. How do you guys deal with this stuff? Sure, I, I think when you talk about, you know, a, a formalized anti-bullying program, we, we have a, a few vehicles that, that we use to, to handle these situations. We have student support, uh, teams that meet weekly and, and talk about a lot of these social emotional issues that, that involve our guidance counselors, our, our social worker, our psychologist. Uh, and again, to echo uh, what Mrs. Larson said uh, as far as being proactive, establishing a lot of those healthy social emotional relationships. Uh, it's about engaging students uh, in school, whether it's an after school activity, a mock trial, robotics. Uh, there's a lot of vehicles we use to provide students with those good relationships so, so that when they encounter a relationship or interaction that that uh, they don't feel as positive. Uh, a, they they have good relationships to fall back on, and B, they, they know who they can go to for help. Uh, they know who they can uh, who they can talk to and have some of those conversations. And and uh, at that point, we, we connect with the family uh, of both sides and, and have those conversations and try to educate as much as we can uh, to make sure uh, that they're engaging in those positive relationships. In middle school, it's really about finding yourself and and uh, and developing those skills. Yeah. you know healthy unhealthy uh, through our health curriculum uh, th there's a lot of angles that, that they really uh, get exposed to a lot of those those issues issues for and Nicole all of this kind of starts at the elementary level absolutely uh, so again to echo what they say you know we try to do a very proactive approach we have um, you know four behavioral expectations that we you know really do a lot of work on at the elementary schools being respectful responsible safe and ready to learn and that is part of our our day-to-day -day activities that we do and and with that we work with the students on on being respectful to everybody and and what to do when you're seeing things that maybe aren't so respectful um, so we do, we, and we have our great body shop, the health curriculum that also we teach lessons on bullying and teaching, you know, children, um, positive coping skills for when they're dealing with situations that may not be pleasant. Um, we have our open circle curriculum, which also is, is a social emotional, uh, curriculum that we do weekly with the students. So that's, it's been really good for them. Yeah. I've always kind of thought that, that, uh, when somebody's bullied, it says a lot about the person who is bullying. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of, a lot of uh, 
the approaches you discuss all have to do with the victim. But I just wonder, wh what are we actually teaching kids about doing this? And then are there techniques that they can learn to, you know, kind of get this back on the right track, these relationships? It's kind of a weird question, but. So in the person that may be doing the bullying, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why we take the time to do the education component. And usually when you get into a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know, they'll share more and you understand where they're coming from. And then we talk about how they can improve their own relationship with whatever they're having trouble with. We also sometimes do mediations so that we can have the person, you know, if they're both agreeable, they can talk it through. They, oftentimes it's someone that they've been friends with. So we try to repair the damage that has taken place between a relationship. We never try to force the relationship to continue, but we want to make sure they can act appropriately and civil in the same building and coexist and that, that's the really important message of you know being able to understand that you need to be tolerant of each other so we do try to take a lot of time to educate and help them get through whatever issues they might be having and then provide those supports like Chad talked about at the middle school with we have a lot of good support professionals in the high school that can do those things and help that student even further yeah that's really good to know yeah. uh, last week we had Scott Sullivan the uh, school resource officer on for the first time, he's fairly new at the job, but he said something interesting that I, I hadn't thought about. And he said, yeah, you've, people very, very rarely bully somebody that they know. And he said, so what, what he sees as part of the fix is try to get these kids to know each other. Sit down and say, okay, where are you from? What do you, what's your background? You know, things like that. Uh, because I, I think the key to stopping this stuff, or you'll never stop it, it's human nature, uh, is to keep, to give the bulliers uh, some perspective on what they're doing and why are they doing this. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is kind of trying to pick up the other kids' egos after they've been, been, been beat around. Uh, Cyberbullying is a harder problem, I guess, to detect. But now that we have all these social media and things, and uh, uh, there, there have been real examples in the country about kids taking this so seriously that they commit suicide. And I guess, uh, how do we go about preventing something like that, again, in cyberspace uh, and here in Portsmouth? Tom, maybe you could jump in on that. Sure. So, uh, you know, when, when you're talking about a topic of, of bullying or a, a student feels like they're being picked on by other students, in, in this day and age, I, I think a lot of what, you know, uh, Colleen, Chad, and Nicole um, can attest to, probably maybe the, uh, Colleen and, and Chad more, is that it, it it in this day and age kind of revolves more around the the social media um, aspect and what they can do and the majority of, of, of kids in this day and age have phones so um, I think it's a lot about uh, you know teaching them how to um, you know kind of behave appropriately if you will um, the, the term that that we use yeah. um, in education is digital citizenship and and you know how to how to make sure that they're acting appropriately in all venues um, you know certainly whatever they're doing out there on the internet in cyberspace you know on their devices is a big part of it yeah see one of the problems is there's no actual course on how to act responsibly in cyberspace mm -hmm. but we we Thank do you. offer uh, not, not an explicit course but as part of a curriculum for our technology program uh, we offer responsible use uh, lessons and, and try to guide students in, in our advisory programs uh, and in our health curriculum also Absolutely. as far as uh, technology and, and about the accessibility uh, and that's really when, when you think about traditionally what bullying was uh, you know in previous generations uh, the social media has just increased accessibility uh, for students uh, and, and we try understanding that accessibility is there uh, try to offer students really responsible you know ways that they can interact on social media understanding that uh, it's it's not that much different from face-to-face -face, uh, interaction uh, and that uh, as far as when we connect with families really understanding you know your child's online life uh, as far as trying to keep up with the software and technology uh, that that can be very challenging for parents and for the school uh, but when it's happening outside of school uh, mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's gonna cause that student uh, difficulty in coming to school and, and performing a, at their best level uh, it's important to partner and, and have those discussions uh, and make sure that students are aware of, of responsible use yeah I, I think that one of the interesting things is it's, it's impossible to control what people are doing with these things unless you just say turn off your devices well I, I, yeah I don't I don't think uh, we advocate for a, a, a no use you know situation at home but I think there's times when, when a parent can say at night 
you know, maybe the, maybe the device yeah. gets put to the side uh, where, where students can either engage in homework, you know, without distraction. Uh, it's all like any technology, like whether it would be a television or just a, the old-fashioned phone. Uh, it, it comes down to how much of a distraction that's, that's causing at home. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there are ways to, to curtail and to control, you know, without denying completely and making sure that your child has a healthy interaction with the social media and, and use it. We have Twitter feeds, uh, Facebook, you know, it, it's a way for, to open up the world to our children. Right. Uh, it's just about like any, you know, vehicle that we use to open up the world to our children, making sure it's in a healthy, uh, age appropriate manner. Yeah. At the high school level, too, we actually revised the freshman curriculum. There's a mandatory course, you know, in technology, and we've included digital citizenship, and we do a lot with oh, cyberbullying, and um, we actually had Officer Sullivan speak to the students in those classes. Um, so the entire freshman class will get, you know, instruction around that, and they do a whole project on cyberbullying. So we really try to expose them to, once you put it out there, it's out there, you know, so you really have to Absolutely. think about, you know, before you hit that send button, or you really have to think about what, you know, how are you saying it, because, you know, not saying it in person anymore so you know people can perceive how they want to read it you know tone makes a difference attitude makes a difference and when you're not hearing it out of their mouth and you're reading it you can sort of create any tone or perception you want so we really try to impress upon them that you know communicate in person you know but when you're getting online that there's a better way to do it if you're not sure that you know we'll help you out with that yeah now, Nicole you know most people think of this as middle school and high school problems but I imagine you're starting to see this at least we do we do so we definitely Definitely, we address a lot of, um, you know, not talking to people online that you don't know. Um, and But still the same, you know, watch how you present yourself, you know, yeah. watch what websites you go to. Um, and definitely letting kids know that, you know, you should not be doing anything that your parents don't know that you're doing. You know, you shouldn't go to any websites that, you know, your parents don't know. So a lot of it is just that kind of giving them that caution. Yeah, I think there's a lot of safety issues, mm -hmm. particularly with younger Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. And yeah, I, I think the idea of, of you're talking about w which websites to go to, you know, the idea of making them skeptical of everything they see, mm -hmm. is th that's what they should be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there are a lot of scams out there. But, you know, I, I guess the one, th this is a big difference from when I was a student when you were a student. Uh, we had no way to sit in the classroom if we wanted to and be talking to our buddy in the other classroom or something like that. So, so the whole use of devices, smartphones, uh, uh, phones, other other tablets, et cetera. Uh, and, and I read somewhere recently where this, this starts at a very early age, and they're, they're starting to see kids in elementary school with their own cell phone. Uh, I guess my question is, is there any kind of policy that the schools have about the use of these in the classroom? Or even in school. I mean, yeah, I, I think you know what one of the, the the things to to keep in mind, Doug, as you said, is it, it, it we're not going to be able to to pull back on where society is in in you know in general with this, and sure. the fact that the majority of our kids, you know, probably starting at, at middle school and on up have have these devices, and we're seeing it earlier and earlier. So, I think the the, the approach that you know most people are trying to to take in in schools now. Um, is, is how can we make the, the students use their devices responsibly in an educational setting. Um, so I mean, we certainly have as part of um, different policies, you know, we have around ex ex uh, acceptable use of technology that students have to adhere to for technology in general. Um, our, our bullying policies certainly cover uh, cyber bullying and, and that kind of thing. But um, you know, I, I think I think a, a lot of it is about teaching students how to use those devices appropriately in an educational setting. There's a lot that can, you know, yeah. a lot of positive things that can be done in this day and age. Our, our high school has. Um, you know, the last few years adopted a, a bring your own device uh, approach at the high school so students are able to bring those devices but they, they should be doing educationally appropriate things with them yeah. during the school day so that's a, you know that's part of it that's, that's that digital well, citizenship component that. right <laughs> um, you know and uh, you know we are exploring uh, you know you, you talked about um, you know other other devices we're, we're exploring a, a one-to-one you know uh, you know, program we have a pilot going at the middle school this year on um, that we may decide to expand so that that's you know it's more with a you know a, a, a computer device but trying to make sure that students have have access to that kind of device at all times uh, again there's a lot that they 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 could do with that um, so it's making sure that we focus them on what are the appropriate uses that they should be using yeah, those it, it just seems to me like it's it's another issue that teachers have to deal with and it, it's a hard one because right. 
we were all kids. We know yeah. kids are sneaky. They can do these things. Yeah, and there's, and there's kind of just so many track. positive things, though, that can also happen. Yeah, absolutely. You I mean, know, the, for the idea that you can you look know, up anything right. on Google. And, and, you know. and lessons that, you know, in, in, in any subject area in this day and age that can revolve around, okay, yeah. if every student is on a device in the classroom, you know, again, using it appropriately, so much more that, that you can do. So that's Let me get back to this use your own device thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You were talking about like a tablet or a laptop or something like that. Yeah, so if we were, um, again, so, so the, the bring your own device policy, which is the way our high school currently um, has things, is, is that, you know, students could, could bring in their own devices, which with, with, you know, with this generation of students, especially at the high school level, tends to be a phone. Um, you know, I, I have a, my oldest is 13. I'm amazed at what she does just on her phone. I mean, students sure, are literally everything. writing papers in this day and age on, on their phones. Um, but then when we go, when you talk about going one to one and we use that, that terminology, that, that's more of a, either a tablet or um, the, this <coughs> device called a Chromebook, which is very popular. Okay, now, th they can use this in the classroom to what, look, look at PowerPoint slides or what, what are they? Yeah, re research, um, again, at the discretion of the teacher, what, yeah. what, you know, what the teacher has directed them to do that's educationally appropriate with these devices. Yeah. So we, it's, it's a lot of teacher autonomy. So we have teachers that, you know, um, depending on what class they're in, the kids know, okay, your phone goes in your backpack and you put the backpacks at the end of the classroom and the phones aren't going to be out. There are other classrooms I visited many where they'd say, okay, so when you partner up right now, you can use your phones or you can use your iPad if you have one with you because the lesson is built technology right into it. The idea is to bring more technology into their learning and into the classroom. Sure. And so there's an appropriate way to use your phone and the more we educate students about that it's what Tom said about the responsible use so they're they're understanding that there's better ways to use their phone than just texting their friends so yeah. and, the, and the teachers are employ the uses of that and we've done training and PD for teachers on what are things you can do in the classroom with you know with cell phones and how can you you know improve your lessons by bringing more technology in and realizing what's right at your fingertips sure. so there's you know there's a great respect for now um, being able to use that device in the classroom and using it appropriately. So, I, yeah, I think when you think about Portsmouth as a district, we're fortunate to have wonderful teachers uh, who who really don't think of uh, a bring your own device or one-to-one -one initiative as as a, just another thing to do. Uh, it's really about how that device advances advances student learning, uh, whether it's through assessment, uh, through creativity, students creating their own projects, how they're developing those critical thinking skills. Uh, problem solving as a group collaboratively and, and how that technology advances that. I, I think if it was a matter of just a, an iPad or Chromebook replacing a notebook, I think that that's a, a little lower level that, that probably isn't, isn't advancing as much. But our teachers are really, as Colleen said, they've had PD. They, they go out and they access their own resources, whether it's an app or uh, something generated with curriculum or assessment yeah. to, to employ mm -hmm. for those students and really advance those students uh, beyond what a traditional uh, classroom with the, with the blackboard and the notebooks would be able to do. Yeah, I think it's great that they're being taught to use these things and, and being shown what you can do with it mm -hmm. in a positive way. And appropriately, yeah. great use. Uh, Nicole, now we're talking elementary school is up to what, what age about? Uh, we go up to third grade. Third grade, so that's what? So uh, eight years eight, old? Yeah. Eight or nine? Yeah. Are we seeing this kind of stuff in elementary So I will say, school? knock on wood, <laughs> in the seven years I've been in the elementary school, we have uh, not had an issue with that. Um, I don't think it's... It's something that, pro you know, I'm sure will eventually happen. I think that we'll, you know, we'll kind of deal with it and go with, with the times. I mean, if, if you know, six and seven year olds are starting, if, if the culture is, that's the age that kids are getting cell phones. I hope, I hope not. I have a six year old. I can't imagine how that would go. Um, and, you know, and we would, she doesn't we have a cell phone. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, but again, though, it is. It's just about. I mean, we do. A, you know, our students do a lot on the computers and a lot on the internet. So again, though, it's just about. You know using it appropriately and yeah. using it wisely um, and really instilling that as early as we can. Yeah, I, I think as, if you look at it as a tool, mm -hmm. it can be very valuable. Absolutely. Uh, I, I would love to have had something like that when I was going to school, but I probably would have used it all the bad ways. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way things work, I guess. Uh, let, me, let me ask you just quickly, and, and I don't know what if there's a right answer to this. I just wondered how we deal with things like transgender issues and other things like that in the schools. Is there some sort of policy? So it, it is, you know, certainly a topic in this day and age that all schools yeah. and, and districts are preparing themselves uh, for. Um, you know, we've, we've, you know, seen our own circumstances uh, at the state level. It's the 
you know, right now districts, you know, are being required to develop and, and work on policy, so we're doing that. Yeah. Um, and then um, we can probably talk, um, you know, more specifically about some of the examples. Sure. At the high school, we have um, a, uh, a program or a group called the GSA, the Gay Straight Alliance. They've been, you know, we've had that in place for years, um, and it really is, provides a forum for students to be able to have other students to talk to when they're struggling with any kind of transition. Yeah. Um, and they have meetings twice a month. There's probably 15, 16 kids that average come to those meetings. They put on um, certain events, social events. They just had a fall social to raise awareness. Um, but they do a lot in their meetings. Like they had someone from um, Providence come down from Youth Pride. They also have done um, their own like passages from a book or looking at clips online and discussing them. So yeah. you really have a supervised forum to talk about supporting these students in issues they might be struggling with and trying to understand, you know, what it all means. And yeah. so rather than be out there on their own and trying to think, oh, am I different? They truly, they really try to make it aware that was the point of the false social to that they're inclusive. They're an inclusive part of our community. And um, so they have a, you know, a great program in place where and the students really support each other. And they talk about, oh, I went through that, but this is how I dealt with it. Or have you thought about this? And so it really becomes a nice support for each other. It sounds like a great program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have anything similar or is it too young? At it, it, we try to remain age appropriate, and I think we're, how we handle uh, issues transgender and similar is to just offer every student the what they need to succeed, whether it's social, yeah. emotional, physical, uh, and to try to preserve every student's dignity and the dignity of a learning environment. Uh, we comprehensively across the grade levels teach tolerance units, whether it's connected to civil rights or, or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, really trying to just promote that tolerance and, the, and that acceptance. Yeah, a lot of this relates back to bullying as well. But uh, sure. uh, l let me spend the, the, the rest of our time here talking about the big elephant in the room, and that's uh, uh, drinking and drug use uh, among our kids. I'm not saying necessarily they do it at school, but they, they probably, it's probably not, it's, it's not impossible. Uh, I just wondered what kind of programs you guys have to, that, well, educate these kids not into the just don't do it because I said so stuff, but you probably want to think about this because your brain cells are going to be, you know, going down if you do it. Uh, how, how do you guys deal with this stuff? So it's, you know, the it's a societal issue, sure. I Sure. I was just going to say the analogy that I, you know, like to use is schools are a microcosm of society. So and any issue that we have out there in yeah. you know American society we're dealing with in some way shape or form a lot of the things we've already talked absolutely. about so far absolutely. in our schools so so absolutely we we have to you know educate our students as much as possible um, you know the, then be able to to do as much as we can in the prevention area you know work with our our families you know make sure that we uh, you know keep that two-way communication going you know we have certainly many examples that we can talk about here yeah. Um, I don't want to get specific right, here, right, but right. yeah, well, please. We do. We we certainly, and I know Nicole can speak to this as well. We have certain uh, programs. We have uh, awareness weeks, whether it's Red Ribbon Week for substance abuse. <coughs> excuse me, uh, Project Purple, uh, our health curriculums as far as healthy use, not just the you know the just say no, which is certainly part of the message. Uh, but also we have guest speakers in who will come and talk about some of their real life experiences and, and not only what they went through, but how they also you know made a turnaround and, and changed. Uh, that pattern of behavior for the better. Uh, I know it, Project Purple is something we do district wide. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Red Ribbon Week is, is district wide. Chris Heron project. Yes, yeah. oh, that's Chris right. Heron project. Yeah, we've he had them on yeah. the show as well. Yeah, he has a powerful message mm -hmm. uh, that I think really hits home for kids yeah. uh, in a meaningful way that they can really relate to and, and think about. You know, when they're in some of those situations that uh, that again society brings to their door. Yeah. Uh, they can make they can make those difficult choices. And Nicole, you don't see this hopefully at the elementary schools. <laughs> we though. don't, but we definitely address it. Um, you know, we celebrate Red Ribbon Week every year along with Project Purple Week. We focus a lot on making healthy choices, so healthy eating, um, you know, exercise, yeah. making good personal choices. Um, what we've done in the past is we've brought the Patriots Committed group from the high school down to work with some of our elementary stu students who absolutely love that, um, and just really kind of talking about how to take care of of you and you know and others I, th I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the work of the Portsmouth Prevention Coalition oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that partners with with the district and each school sends representatives and, and they've done surveys mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're just they're all constantly involved as a community 
uh, with combating support financially some of those some trends. Things that we've, we've, we've yeah, done it's in a the good past. organization. Yeah, so from the high school perspective, they, we work very closely with the Prevention Coalition, and um, they help sponsor um, a group we have called Patriots Committed, and we started yes. it two years ago, um, going to Lake Placid for some really in-depth training in the summertime. Um, and we sent nine students our first year. Last year, we sent 15 students. And we um, they have come back to the schools, and they've done phenomenal work. In fact, they were recognized this past summer as program of the year for life of an athlete nationwide um, for the work that they've done. And they've wow. done um, work in our schools. So between Project Purple and like they, they want to put on chemical free alternatives. So they put on an event in September. It was a glow in the dark capture the flag and 120 kids came out that night. It was a free event. It was a chemical free alternative. Um, they've, they're planning dodgeball tournaments coming up for the end of Red Ribbon Week. Or, sorry, Project Purple Week. Um, they've planned movie nights. So and they um, have gone out and spoken to the students. So for National Smoke Out Day, they, we actually went out to like 40 or 50 percent of the advisories in, in the school and the students went out talk to other students and I think that's the powerful message it's kids teaching other kids that yeah. you know you can say no and there are alternatives to using and it doesn't you know it's it's a good thing and there's and let me teach you what what that is and there's other kids that you might want to hang with if you don't want to make those choices and so that's really grown for us and really been a really positive influence at the high school and we just redid our curriculum a year ago in 9 through 12 to incorporate a lot of these pieces in our health classes to make sure we you know are giving them um, choices at the high school of what does it mean to say no what does that look like you know what are refusal skills how do you get out of something that you're not right. sure what to say or do so there's there's an a lot, awful lot of education around it I, I think that's a great idea to involve kids in in their in dealing with their own issues and uh, that's what i'm hearing from you guys i'm delighted that you're doing this in schools uh, keep doing it because uh, i think it's very important one of the things that scott sullivan mentioned when he was here last week uh was that uh First, he said that he, he feels that drugs are almost readily available in Portsmouth. And I think a lot of parents kind of tune that out, you know, not my kids. But I think the idea that, that things are available, not just pot, but other more serious drugs perhaps, alcohol is always available. Uh, sometimes med medicine that can be give you a high is, is available. Uh, and he's, he's gone to courses that teach him how to recognize when somebody's under the influence of something. And I just wonder, is that anything that would be useful to your teachers to get some sort of a training in that, perhaps? And so we have had uh, some some uh, members of our high school staff uh, trained uh, in that. I we went to a two-day um, program of drug recognition. Um, myself, the nurse, um, a few teachers in the school, the other assistant principal, um, so that just to give more um, awareness of if we think someone's under the influence. And yeah. we come from a perspective of safety. So if we suspect something, then our goal is to then bring them to the nurse. She's our chief medical officer, and she's going to, you know, use her expertise to determine if the child is under the influence. You okay, know? I've, I've got to cut us off here because we're out of time. I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Thank you. Fascinating Thank you. subject, and I look forward to talking about the academic side in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I just want to mention a couple of quick things to our audience. Uh, the Portsmouth Historical Society membership drive is ongoing, and I'd like to ask that you consider joining or otherwise supporting uh, the society. A team will be available in the Clements Lobby this Sunday, 6 December, from 11 to 1 to accept your membership application or donations. And another note, Our Town Portsmouth premiered uh, on the 2nd of December this past Wednesday on Rhode Island PBS and an encore on December 8th at 4 a.m. So if you have a DVR, maybe you could follow it at on the 10th of December at a reasonable time, 9 p.m. And then on December 11th again at 2 a.m. Uh, I thought it was a great show about the town and well worth watching. That's it for me, Doug Smith. We'll see you next time.